Hello and welcome to Wednesday Waffle and uh, yeah, we'll get straight on and uh, what have we been up to this week? Our upcoming videos, the waffle and then however I choose to finish off this week. There's my running order okay? Now my notes. <laughs> yeah I'm still using it so if I look down and this this week there's a lot for me to remember I'm, you know I'm well over 21 now anyway this weekend we went to Ockendoon Castle we've been before not a new spot um, it is getting harder to find new spots that are not for just you know sleeping just for somewhere we can can explore but uh, Ockingham Castle is a lovely spot. I'm working on the videos. We It rained most of the weekend, but we got out. Saturday afternoon was reasonable. We got out. We did a little bit of exploring. Um, but Saturday evening, I managed to fly the drone at sunset, which uh, should be interesting to see the outcome of that. And, uh, yeah, I landed it safely. No problems. <laughs> And I could see it, no problem, before any of the drone flies. I've got a, um, a strobe, which uh, I stick on when I'm flying. Well, that was the first time when I uh, fly later on at night. Um, I may even try some night flying. But I don't think that'll work for places we go, because it kind of relies on, on nighttime lighting and, you know, uh, street lights and, and things being lit up and that. And the places we go tend to be dark. Uh, Anyway, okay, so what videos have we got coming up for you? Well, the next week's videos are from a new spot. On Friday, I've screwed it up. That's not like me. Don't forget, tomorrow, you're seeing this on Wednesday, tomorrow, it's Throwback Thursday, and if you're not seeing it on Wednesday, Throwback Thursday was just the day after this video. <laughs> I'm not going to bloop, but I think I'll just leave that in. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's this week's videos that are at a new spot, <laughs> not next week's. So we've got Throwback Thursday. Throwback Thursday this week is Picks and Vikings at Burghead. Hope you enjoy that. Friday. We finish off our visit to uh, Dunnydoff and Tarnash Falls with the video It's Not A Bad Aussie Lou and The Falls Are Not Off Colour. It's the video of that trip. Monday we have a pass at Mayday which is our photo diary from our trip up to Rattigan and uh, yeah, part of our Mayday meanderings to steal somebody's title. Um, yeah, it was about our trip up to Ratting and it's Lin Lindsay's uh, photo diary of there and Lochmore. Next Wednesday, more waffle. Next Friday is Mayday, 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 and it's video from the Mayday meandering. That's the Rattigan Pass, um, which produced a lovely sunset and the uh, Lochmore as well, and the, uh, the little river there. So, what am I going to waffle about? Well, there were endless possibilities this week. <laughs> but what I'm going to talk about is, um, well, it, I'm talking about it because I was asked by a couple of people just for a timeline of my time in the RAF. Basically, you know, when I joined, what, where I was, what I did. And I hope you find this interesting. And uh, I'll talk, talk about it now. And I joined in 1978. And I went first to RAF Swinderby. Now, RAF Swinderby in those days was where they did the square bashing. Um, square bashing is really the wrong term. And not just because it's the Air Force. That's really not what it's about. What they're trying to do is that if after you've been in the air for six weeks and one day the worst happened you could at least
follow orders. You would at least, if somebody shouted jump, you'd be shouting, was that high enough on the way down? Kind of thing. And that's what the, that is about. It, it takes a, a raw recruit and turns them into something they can work with. You learn to shoot. Um, I could already shoot. You learn, you do square bashing. You, you learn to polish shoes, iron press trousers and, and polish brass and all the usual things they do to mess with your brain while, while you're there. Then after Swinderby, I went to RAF Cosford and that's where I trained at the time in air comms, air radar, what's called a splitter, a split brain, one of the fairy trades. Yes, I was a fairy during the time I was in the Air Force. The... No, I'm not going to talk about why I was a fairy, apart from to say it's to do with the badge. That is actually a subject for another um, waffle, because it's a very interesting piece of history. Um, anyway, back to Cosford. I was there for three years, till 1981, and in that time I learnt my trade, I uh, played a lot of rugby, I played a rock, lot of rugby while doing route linings at, uh, for the Queen and various visitors to, to the country. It was part of the apprentice uh, lot that the, because we were together for three years we could do a lot of route linings and do them over and, you know, and it was a progressive thing. Um, you sort of moved through the ranks of people who could do route linings. And we used to go down to London and horse, in horse guards, form up, march out and line the route of wherever people were going to be going to see the Queen or the Queen herself. Um, and yeah, that was, that was part of what we did. Um, interesting in that it got us away from training and we played rugby against Holton a few times and we drank their nappy dry a couple of times as well. Anyway, <laughs> oh, I did one other thing while I was at Cosford. One rather important thing. Any idea what that might be? Lindsay knows. Yep, we got married in 1980 while I was in training at RAF Cosford. In 1981, Having finished my training, I got posted to RAF Kinloss. This is my first posting to Kinloss. I'd been before as part of a station visit in my training. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, I loved it. I've actually put, uh, for my important things that I want to talk about in here, Bays, Bongs and Botty Wipes and the Falklands. Let's do the Falklands first. The Falklands was a conflict in 1982 which seems to have gone unremarked upon since then. There's been a number of big anniversaries and oh yeah it happens and it is still manned. We now have a presence there. Um, I'm not sure whether it's as big or as small as when I was, was there but uh, we have a presence there. The Nimrods, which I was involved with, operated out of Ascension Island during the Falkland conflict and now operate, if necessary, from Mount Pleasant in the Falkland Islands. But there's a, a flight of aircraft stationed there and a, a gar and the base is garrisoned and etc. etc. Um, kind of an important thing in my first day. I worked um, in EES and on NLS, that's the second line engineering squadron, electrical engineering squadron, electronic engineering squadron, I should say, and uh, Nimrod line squadron, which serviced the, the Nimrod fleet at RF Kinloss. Uh, during that time, I spent a great deal of time on uh, detachment. Uh, during this period, in fact, it was when I spent a lot of time in... Uh, spent overseas basically um, <laughs> on the east coast of America a great deal of it uh, a great deal of it in the Mediterranean and so on and so forth a, a lot of you are thinking oh great 
the Mediterranean, what a wonderful place. Yeah. Yes, it is. I'm, let's not be you know, thinking about it. But Cyprus and Gibraltar were not the best places to, to work out of with an Nimrod. Um, Sigonella was nice working with the Americans on Sicily. That was that was lovely. Um, but uh, most of it, um, you know, Cyprus and Gibraltar, especially Gibraltar, was not fun. Especially when the troubles with Spain over who owned Gibraltar and landing and entering airspace, etc., etc., was going on. That was fun. But bays, bongs, and body wipes. Bays, bongs, and body wipes was basically what they called the prep of a Nimrod before the air crew arrived so it could uh, go and, uh, and, and fly. Now, bongs is pretty straightforward. That was the, uh, the pitostatic and engine bongs, etc. Um, around the aircraft were removed and stowed um, so that all the systems would work. Uh, you, you, red flags, things with red flags on, and, and the, the engine blanks uh, I'm talking about here. They, they were, um, that was part of it, that's the bongs. Bays was the, uh, the actual bays, you opened up the floor and there were, there were bays in there. And uh, they were full of leaking fluids. Um, in fact, one of the trips I've spoken about in the past, my Iceland trip, it was the leaking fluids in one of those bays that led to the problems. So those fluids were wiped up um, with something we called elephant bog roll. Uh, Kim wipe was the trade name of it, big blue rolls. That was, was cleaned up and so on. It was... Uh, and body wipes is literally that. There were drains on these bays and other places and uh, you went along the bottom of the aircraft and wiped its bomb, as it were. Um, all part of part and parcel. And on detachment it normally fell to the ferries that were there, uh, but it was usually the, the job of the sea off crew, um, which could consist of flight line mechanics or any of the, the trades could be seen in a seal. We did lots of sea ins and sea offs, um, just good use of manpower. In 1984, after I'd spent some time uh, on a very difficult trip in Florida, I was posted to RAF St Morgan. During, uh, during this time, Craig was born. Craig is a Cornishman. Probably conceived, but definitely born in uh, Cornwall. And I, I entitled this Beaches and Storms, because that's all there ever seemed to be in Cornwall. Sunny days on the beaches, or it was being stormy and windy. But I was at St Morgan for three years. And I spent some time at uh, Nimrod Line at Flight, as it was called, because there was only one squadron at uh, St Morgan. And I spent some time on in the uh, in the on the working in the hangar, and the job there was uh, maintenance and. Tempest checking, basically pulling the aircraft out and making sure the secure comms were secure. After three years there, it was back to RAF Kinos. I made a mistake at St Morgan, I fixed somebody's computer and I was uh, asked if I would like to go back to Kinos, which I did, and work on the software team, which I thought, yeah, that might be different. So I was there from 1987 to 1995. During this time, I worked on the software team. I did some, uh, I, I worked in the secure room where the computers were. I was a computer operator basically. This is before the days of desktop PCs. Where, where the, 
the IBM um, 286, 8086 was a, a, available, but the 20, the 286, the 20, two, the 8286, sorry, was a still a thing of the future. At least as far as the RAF was concerned. So uh, I worked there. I was involved in all sorts while I was there. A lot of courses to do on the computers we used, um, minis rather than anything else. And networking, we did a secure fibre optic network with PCs by the time I left. And so on and so forth. So yeah, I spent a lot of time at Kinloss in my career. And I, I particularly enjoyed the, the software team. It was... Um, different to use a word, coin a phrase that, well no it's not coin, we use it here a lot. So uh, at the end, or uh, during 1995, I was offered a promotion and in many ways I wish I hadn't. Um, that led to me going to RAF Strike Command, which I've written in my notes as small systems and travelling the AWOL. I, because I worked on the software team, I'd done programming courses, RAF programming courses, uh, but I wasn't a programmer. I'd never used them. My, my programming was all to do with uh, batch languages on the minis, which were, um, you know, totally different to programming. It was, yeah. Anyway, High Wickham decided I was going to work at the Small Systems Group and be a, a, a programmer. Um, I soon abused, disabused them of that notion and they moved me to testing and yeah I did a lot of testing but I also got put in charge of a small team of data analysts and they were working on some software for um, performance monitoring of fighter pilots hence the travelling up and down the A1. We were using rapid application techniques and Going up and down the A1, basically writing this software. I was managing the team and they were writing and doing the job, their job. Um, I didn't enjoy High Wickham at all as far as work. It's the only place I worked that didn't have a runway or a helipad when I was in the Air Force. Um, sorry, it just had a helipad. Um, and there was no aircraft base there, etc, etc. Um, I didn't enjoy it. It wasn't the place for somebody like me. It certainly wasn't the place for a senior NCO. Um, not when flight lieutenants and, and squadron leaders are, are being treated almost as T-boys by, by the people that are there. There's also a lot of other tales. Um, and for all I've been out of the Air Force, 21 years, coming up for 21 years, it still feels like telling tales out of school. Um, I've told a few people, but I'm, I'm not going to broadcast. Put it this way, my three years there were not my favourite. In early 98, we'd completed the project with the fighter pilots, and I got onto my desk. In fact, it was before that. It was in, back in the 97. I got on my desk, and said, look, I uh, I don't want this. I would ideally like to go back to King Hoss, but anywhere with aircraft. And uh, lo and behold, there was a post available. Um, 15 Squadron at RF Lossamouth. So I was there from 98 to 2000, uh, working on tornadoes. Um, spent three months at Marham on courses uh, to, to learn the aircraft and I, I enjoyed working on the aircraft I enjoyed working on aircraft yeah I wouldn't have been in the Air Force if I didn't it was uh, it was different it was certainly a different atmosphere a different thing to um, working on on Nimrods and it was a an aircraft that had just been changed from the GR1 to the GR4 and was gradually rolling over and worked with some great people, had a, a good time, learned some stuff. But 
Now I've told the story, so I'm not going to go into it too far. One early Saturday morning, after a long week of uh, back shift, I, uh, I decided me and the Air Force had had enough. I decided it was time to get out, put in my notice, and towards the end of 2000, I, I left. Um, I actually, because of accrued leave and uh, disembarkation leave and etc, etc, left the Air Force towards the end of July, but it was towards the end of October before I was actually out of the Air Force. Um, and that's an Air Force timeline. Through all this, Lindsay's been with me. We've had ups and downs and lows. But in all, the Air Force was great. I would recommend the life to anybody. Anybody who's coming out of school, be it going for an apprenticeship or a commission or direct entry or however they do it. You will have a great time. You will see things and do things you would never have dreamed of doing. You will work hard, but more than that, you'll have fun. Well, that's the timeline. I don't know how long I've gone on. Um, I hope the person who asked for that enjoys it. And I hope the rest of you do as well. If you've got anything you think I could waffle about, direct message me, message below in the uh, comments, or uh, or an email. The email's on the about page. And uh, yeah, so I think that's about it. I've told you what we were doing, although I've got a bit to add for that. I've told you what's coming up. I've waffled. So uh, yeah, we must be there. Yeah, the bit I want to add is. Um, Due to some superb driving on my part, Desmond's been in the wars again. But I've repaired him. The repair I did when the when his skirt fell off, um, yeah, it needed redoing. But it's redone now. Um, just got some bits and pieces to stick on if this rain ever stops. If not, I'm going to have to stick them on in the rain and hope they stay stuck on. Anyway, if this, if that was the waffle. Here's the drone footage. Desmond's Donners. And remember, please take nothing but memories 
and leave nothing but tracks. Please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications and hopefully we'll see you next time.